In today's programme, join Mick and myself as we go to the Monument Lake in search of big carp. We've got all the experts. We've got Alex Bones on pleasure fishing, Neil Bryant on sea, and of course, Pete Castle, our carp man's here as well. Welcome to Total Fishing. Well, here we are, Sir Michael. Sunny Shropshire at its best. Yeah, very sunny. <laughs> Fantastic, isn't it? It's awful. Isn't it? Well, folks, let me tell you, a little bit of bad weather hasn't stopped the Arkansas Chuggerbug getting us here. We've only just about made it. We're in Shifnal. This is the Monument Carp Fishery. And whatever happens with the weather today, it's going to be an action-packed show from start to finish because apart from anything else, we've got all those wonderful tips and hints that would make even Sir Michael a better fisherman for you to look at, whatever style of fishing you're into. And, of course, a little bit of rain never put me in the juke off from trying some carp fishing, and that's exactly what we're here to do. Yeah, I'll tell you what, mate. I don't like the look of that black cloud. No, oh. it's really... <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to catch anything stuck in here, especially when the crew are throwing buckets of water at us. Let's get I on with the show. On with, on with yeah. the show, eh? Hang no. on. Ah. Hang on, there's another one coming <laughs> over. <laughs> I bought an old summer shirt, but I don't think I'll ever need it. weather certainly hasn't got any better since we got here in fact it seems to be getting worse but uh, it's nice to be back on the monument the last time we came here Mick caught a really big fish he had a 44 pound carp which funnily enough is still the fishery record although there are a number of fish in here that still haven't come out and some of these fish might be pushing 50 pounds I mean just imagine a carp like that it'd be fantastic wouldn't it the fishery's certainly changed since we were here it's matured more there's a lot more flowers trees are starting to grow and on a really nice sunny day I think it'd look an absolute picture. One thing's for sure though there's still a lot of very big fish in the lake and it'll be interesting to see how much the fishing's changed in the intervening year or so. I've had a chat with Mick and um, he's going to be fishing with PVA bags pretty much as we did the last time we came here but I'm going to take a gamble I'm going to try and fish one rod over a bed of bait some hemp and maize and maybe some maggots and um, see how we get on with that. And if it stopped raining, probably be good fun, this. So, while I get to work with a marker float, remember that Total Fishing has got something for everyone. And here's our sea fishing expert, Neil Bryant, who's talking about rubber baits. The mind boggles. Neil Bryant, England International Boat Angler. And I'm here now to show you lure fishing. The jelly worms come in all sorts of colours and all shapes and sizes, but I'm just going to show you a few of my favourites. First off is the fantail, quite a large jelly, and I would use that through deeper water and retrieving quite fast. The next one is a fire tail, the game with a black body, and expect to catch coalfish, pollock, and maybe cod. And there's quite recently on the market we've had the ones that look like sand deals, a great storm lure, great lure. And my favourite, the little orange jelly. A lot of people just wind them a little bit too slow sometimes. And they don't have that natural action. And the way I mount this on the hook is to literally run the hook through the front, run it down and around the bend in the hook, along the shank, straighten it out, and there you have it. A really nice, well-presented jelly worm. Another way of fishing for the great fish, pollock, coalfish, cod. Jelly worms. A great way of fishing, and I love it. Well, I'm just um, spotting out some bait onto the left-hand edge of one of the features here. The interesting thing about this lake, when it was constructed, is that there was a feature put into every swim. Some of these little gravel bars, others are more like little egg carton-type humps and things, but there's always something to fish to. And in this particular swim, there's the edge of one of the features over on the left-hand side, and it's a real hot spot. So what I've decided to do is to spot some bait out there. I'm putting out hemp and maize, I'm going to fish that on one rod with my feeder, so you'll have the better hemp and maize there. I'll cast the feeder with the maggots over the top of that. There'll be plenty of bait there to hold the fish if I can get them in feeding on the maggots. 
And then the right hand rod, I'm going to fish out in the middle, probably on a bag, and just move it around wherever I see fish show. So it seems like a good tactic to me anyway. That was a take, though, I think. Yeah. Well, that's the highlight of the day so far. Matt's just missed one. I put it down to poo rigging myself. I'll go and give him a few tips. <laughs> it does pay you when you're car fishing to get comfortable, get a nice shelter to keep the wind off you, comfortable chair. I think I've done all I can at the moment. I think the rigs are as good as I can get them. And at the moment, I can't think of anything better to do than just enjoy this warm breeze that's blowing across. It's really down to the carp now, and uh, I'm going to have a nap, I think. Is that you, Matt? <laughs> have we done that? When I'm struggling for a bite, this is one of the things that I do. I tend to use a, a fluorescent pop-up hook bait and a PVA bag, but it's what goes in the bag that creates the real interest. Now, I've got some baits out in front of me here. In this one, I've got some maize, some mini halibut pellets, dynamite bait ones, and a little bit of marine halibut pellet ground bait just to dry it all out. Next to it, I've got some white maggots. These are a key part of the bag mix. I'm going to put in about a third of a handful. And then this might interest you. This is liquidized bread here. It's basically ordinary sliced bread that's been put through a food processor and blitzed. So we'll put a little bit of that in and then go back along the row. A little bit more maize and pellet mix. A few more maggots, not quite so many this time. And then a little bit more liquidized. That's all in the bag. I'm going to compress it by using this stick really squash it down to make a nice, compact, castable bag. Once you've done that, just chop a little bit off. And to keep the bag nice and neat, what I do is just cut a couple of handles, like so, and you can get the bag really compact. It's better than the normal overhand loop method using the whole bag, this is. There's the bag. Chop off the handles, and there you go. Now, I fish this in conjunction with a little fluorescent over-flavoured pop-up. And I reckon it's absolutely deadly when you're really struggling to get a bite. It doesn't always work, but it's one of those things that can often catch you that one very difficult to catch fish. So I'm all bagged up and ready to go. Still no fish, but I'm sure they're gonna come. In the meantime though, let's hear from our match fishing guru, Alex Bones. Here's a great tip for colouring and flavouring your meat. A lot of commercial fisheries are pressured waters and something different can make the difference between catching a net full and catching just a few fish. Simply a case of putting the bait into the, into the bag, like that, and at this stage you can add your colours and flavours. Now, this is just one my local tackle shop sells and you can use whatever you like. Red's a particularly good one, you only need a small amount though. Also, add your liquid, I find 5 to 10 mil per tin of meat, you often don't have to be too precise and give it a good shake around. All you need to make sure is every single bait inside the bag is covered. I find it's best to do it the night before, but as long as you do it an hour before you need to use the bait, just give the bait some time to absorb the flavor and color. And that's it. Well, it's uh, mid-afternoon now, and needless to say, nothing's happened several hours since we started fishing. And really, Mick, I don't think we've even come close to catching a fish. No, we haven't seen many either. I do like to see fish. It gives me a bit of confidence. And, uh, and to be fair, I mean, we've gone through all the rigs, the baits and the methods that you would use at this time of year, but it isn't working. No, I mean, in fairness, th this place has changed quite a lot since we last fished it. It's a day ticket water. It is heavily fished. There's a lot of fish in here, but the big change for me has been the weather. I know it sounds like an excuse, but, you know, the fish just aren't feeding. They're not showing. And I think we've gone from sort of coming out here to try and catch a few fish mm. to now saying, well, the job's to catch a fish. 
yeah, I think we ought to get our heads together and, you know, just think how we can refine our approach. We have talked about this and what we've decided is to fish as a team, try different tactics just to try and get that one run and uh, in a nutshell, it's Mission Impossible. What I've got here is a little pineapple popper on quite a long mono hook link. It's around about two and a half to three feet long. This is called a zig rig and I'm going to pop this up straight off the bottom the bait is going to sit about two and a half feet above the lead. Fish will swim by, and out of curiosity, they'll mouth the bait. This is a tactic that probably works on one in ten occasions that you try it. I just honestly can't think of anything else to do. It's, it's rock bottom, this is. Long, long way out. Oh, no, I've got anything for a fish at this stage. <laughs> Quite honestly. Well, to be honest, if you fish from here... The things that Matt and I do when we're fishing are based upon logic and we try and read the situation and adjust our rigs, methods and baits accordingly. Maybe the carp had drifted into this corner. I've just got a hunch they may have blown down this way with the wind. This is the corner, I'm told, where they come to spawn. Give it a couple of hours and let's see how it goes. Well, sometimes there's a lot more to carp fishing than just catching carp. Sometimes it's about being by a lake in the evening like this with the last rays of the sun just glinting off the rods and the breeze has just died down. It's just caressing the surface of the lake now. The sun's come out, there's still a bit of cloud about, but it's a beautiful evening. Everything's still and full of expectation, but I can't help feeling that our chance has gone, really. It's my opinion that the fish are probably going through pre-spawning. They want to spawn. The water temperature's not quite warm enough yet, but they haven't got food on their minds at all. They've got locked jaw. The only thing we can do is sit here and enjoy the last of the sun and think about the next visit, because uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to come back. But that's not a bad thing. So while we contemplate another visit, let's stay with carp fishing and hear another great tip, this time from Pete Castle. I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to use a funnel web to protect your hook. So take a long bait and needle with just a lock off end on it there. Just attach a loop that you've made on the end of your rig and then just pull the whole thing through. The advantages of using something like this is that you can pull the hook right inside the PVA and by doing that, you can actually protect everything that you've got out there. All of the hook is nice and protected by the bait that's inside. And as the PVA breaks down on the bottom, then that leaves your hook bait nice and ready to catch a fish. Well, we said we'd come back, and we have. It's the middle of August now, a couple of months on from our last visit. And, um, well, conditions were very difficult last time, as you'll recall. It was wet, it was windy. But the main problem was that the fish were getting ready to spawn. And true to form, a day after we left, they did spawn, and that explains why they weren't feeding. But here we are now, probably <laughs> up against it again, because this is the hottest day of the year so far. It's early August, it's roasting, there's not much wind, and quite honestly, these are possibly as difficult conditions as they were last time. Yeah, I don't like these sort of conditions. The fish aren't feeding much, and I think I'm going to opt for just sit-and-wait tactics. I've got two PVA bags out there full of hemp, and I'm just going to just hope the fish feed sometime during the day before we go. I'm going to fish the feeder with maggot. I, d I don't think the fish will be in for a load of conventional bait, but I think it's very hard if you fish the maggot well for the fish to resist maggot. And the great thing about this place is there's only carp in here. Yeah, So you've got true. no nuisance fish. So that's going to be my tactics. Yeah. Well, we've got to catch on this time. There's 300 carp in this lake in front of us. And although it's not an easy fishery these days, there's some big fish here. I personally think our best chance is going to be mornings and evenings, but um, you never know. If we work at it, we might just get one. Put a lot of maggots out with a spot. It's a good tactic. Right on the spot. Well, was on, mate? I've just put about six or seven maggots on a size 10. I've probably made about a dozen casts to get a bit of bait down on the deck. And away she went, mate. Brilliant. It's a nice looking carp, and yes, well done, Brownie. Yeah. Great. Well, there you go. Typical monument fish, very pale in colour, 
classic monument shape. Not the biggest fish in the lake. They go to well over 40 pounds, as Mick knows, only too well. But uh, we're off the mark, and on a day like today, a fish like this is a real bonus. Plenty of action. Very unusual dorsal. It was a bit of a, an encounter when it was younger, no doubt. Well, would you believe it? <coughs> I'm away again. Beautiful fish, look at that. It's over 20 pounds. Come on then, Courtney Rado. That's a big fish of the future, that is. One of my favourite ways to fish for big carp is with the maggot feeder. It's something that you don't see enough of. Carp are like every fish. They absolutely love maggots. And the monument is a classic place for fishing the maggot feeder. Why? Well, there's a lot of fish in here. They might be big, but a lot of fish means competition. And nothing gets fish feeding like loads of maggots. This is the rig that I'm using. This is a safety leader. I've got a quarter safety clip and the largest size of oval block end feeder, which is a two and a half ounce feeder. It's a big one, it holds a lot of maggots. I've got a ring swivel below that, which is actually part of the safety leader anyway. And then this hook link is about two feet long, 12 pound fluorocarbon. And then at the hook end, I've got a hair with a couple of small pieces of rig foam on it. And what that does is it neutralizes the weight of the hook. So the whole hook bait sinks really slowly. So any fish coming along, sucking at the maggots, the hook will fly straight up into their mouth because basically that's a neutral buoyancy rig. And that's it, it's very, very simple. The rest of the job is about filling up the feeder on a regular basis and casting it onto the same spot every time. I'll be making casts every five or ten minutes. I'll do that probably for the first hour and then I'll start to lengthen the duration between casts up to 15 minutes and ultimately 20 to 25 minutes. So the idea is just to get some bait on the deck. Once you've done that, you can reduce the frequency of the casts, sit back and wait for the runs. With the sun beating down, it might seem a bit strange to think about fishing at night, but that's exactly what our carp expert, Pete Castle, wants to talk about. Night fish has become an integral part of carp fishing, and I've got three bits here that will help you with that process. One is the headlamp. Now, these are brilliant because they keep your hands free at all times. Now, when you want to do tie rigs and things like that at night, then it's important to have your hands free. Another little gadget that I've got here is a light receiver. This light receiver works off the buzzers and it's set to a four bleep. So you've got one bleep, two, and then you can see the lights come on. You can have that hanging up in your bivvy and you've got light straight away to pop on your boots and get out there and look into the fish. Another one that I've got down here that's really, really good is a sound sensitive one. So as I just started talking then and you can see the lights come on. So again, you have it hooked up with the clips in your bivvy, and then when you get up for a fish in the night, the lights automatically come up and illuminate your swim. So you've got three pieces of equipment there that'll illuminate your swim when you get a fish. I'd go in at first. We struggled a bit the first time we came here. It's come really good this time. Hope you've enjoyed all the hints and tips in the programmes. There'll be loads more of those next time. But for me, it's been a fantastic day. And from the Duke and me, good night. <laughs>